We welcome you to the Master of Trading. This course includes all the information you need to know, in order to become an independent and successful trader. The amount of people who unfortunately lose money in trading is very high, and this is due to a lack of knowledge of the basic concepts. Unfortunately, on the internet, there is a lot of false information, often free, and sites whose only goal is to make you lose money. The first rule is to not trust any analysis or signal, which can be found on the internet. The only signal to enter the market must be a product of your own analysis and skills. The first investment to make is in education. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. It is important to understand the mechanism of the markets and improve to manage your emotions in order to correctly manage your trading capital. Our goal with the realization of this course is to teach every aspect of trading from psychology to risk management to technical analysis and fundamental analysis helping you to generate the best strategies that suits your personality. Identifying a strategy that reflects your way of thinking, acting, and your risk tolerance will be essential to be successful in the long run. If you have any questions throughout the course please contact us privately and we will be happy to assist you at any time. Forex is an abbreviation for foreign exchange market. The forex market is simply the global market that allows the exchange and speculation of one currency for another. The forex market is the most liquid and active market among all the financial markets present today. The daily variations of exchange rates allows traders to buy and sell currency pairs. By changing country and exchanging our currency for another, we unwittingly become participants of the forex market. The forex market is the largest financial market in the world with a daily volume of over 5 trillion dollars. To understand how big this market really is, it is important to know that the stock market has a daily liquidity of only 22 billion dollars. The forex market is an exchange bank that has no physical headquarters, unlike the stock market, and is open 24 hours a day for 5 days a week. It opens on Sundays at 10 p.m. and closes on Fridays at 10 p.m. In the world of finance, there are two main figures who dominate the market, the bulls and the bears. These two animals are taken into account due to the way they attack their enemies. Bulls attack upwards using their horns, while bears attack downwards using their claws. The bulls are the buyers who speculate in the growth of a particular asset. Their purpose is to buy low and sell high to make a profit. The bears, on the other hand, are the sellers who speculate in the decline of a given asset. Their purpose is to sell high and buy low to make a profit. The forex market is divided into various access levels based on the size of the transactions. The main participants in this market are governments, central banks, commercial banks, investment funds, pension funds, and private investors. Governments have many reasons for controlling the value of their currency, and they usually do so by holding the debt of another state or a large portion of their reserves. It is good for governments to have a debt with another state because this ensures that their currency does not depreciate too much. If the United States of America borrows 50 trillion dollars from China, China will want its money back, and as a result China has a vested interest that the US dollar does not depreciate too much. It is all a game of strategy on which the world economy is based. Central banks are the most important participant in this market together with governments. Central banks have the power to decide whether to raise or lower interest rates and the market as a result will immediately start moving sharply. The central banks we refer to are the Federal Reserve System, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, and the Swiss National Bank. Commercial banks are the famous market makers, also known as those who create the market. Commercial banks are important participants who can move price as they wish. They control large amounts of money and can open positions that cause important continuation or reversal price movements. The large commercial banks issue the largest transactions in the forex market. Investment funds and pension funds are organizations that manage huge amounts of capital provided by private clients and the government. These funds speculate a large amount of money in the market, creating profit for themselves and for their clients. Investment firms and pension funds invest trillions of dollars using a conservative approach. In fact, their purpose is to protect the accumulated capital and guarantee the payment of pensions. These two participants do not influence the daily fluctuations, but when they decide to enter or exit a position, they can generate large trend reversals, taking away or adding liquidity to the market. Large private speculators who open multi-billion dollar positions can have a concrete impact on the price movement of currency pairs 
and this also applies to retail traders with large amounts of capital, such as the famous George Soros, which invests in currency pairs, with multi-billion dollar positions. By entering the market with positions of this size, you can certainly influence the direction of the price. Commercial traders are participants who do not speculate in the daily fluctuations of the forex market, but use the market as a tool to hedge global deals, and a potential devaluation of the currency in which they place their interest. Commercial traders use a trading technique called hedging. Multinational companies like Google, having offices all over the world, and paying salaries in different currencies, convert huge amounts of different currencies each month, which can also influence the movement of the market. Another influential participant are the speculative companies, also known as hedge funds. In fact, hedge funds are companies that invest large amounts of capital, speculating exclusively on the fluctuation of the price of certain assets, holding positions for days, weeks, months or even years. These companies have a strong impact on the market, and use an aggressive approach thanks to their experience and investment philosophy. Traders with smaller capital are called retail traders, and have no impact on the market due to insufficient liquidity. For retail traders it becomes essential to understand the psychology of the market, technical analysis, and fundamental analysis, so that they can create their own trading system, following the main trend fluctuations created by the major participants in this market. Decades ago, the forex market was only accessible to financial companies, large corporations, hedge funds, central banks, and investors with large amounts of capital. Traders with a small capital, also known as retail traders, didn't have access to the forex market. The first method of exchange in the form of currency was in 1875 with the birth of the gold standard, in which gold and silver became the main currencies for global payment. Later in 1944, it was established that the US dollar would take the place of gold, becoming the main global exchange currency. The forex market was not invented as a form of speculation, but was created and used to facilitate the exchange of currencies in global affairs between international companies. The forex market doesn't have a physical headquarter or a central government body, and for this reason it is called a decentralized market. There are only government bodies, which issue financial regulations and licenses, to various financial intermediaries such as banks and brokers. Thanks to the technological innovation, the forex market uses an over-the-counter system, in other words an electronic banking system which allows anyone anywhere in the world to be able to invest in the forex market. Today 90% of transactions are exclusively generated by banks, investment companies, and large private speculators, to take advantage of the various daily price fluctuations of specific assets. The remaining 10% of the forex market is used for international trade. The forex market is based on the buying and selling of currency pairs. Before studying the various currency pairs, we must analyze which currencies are available to trade in this market. In the forex market, currency trading has the simplest regulations, and has the greatest overall liquidity. The main currencies, with the greatest trading activity in the forex market are The US dollar The euro The British pound The Japanese yen The Swiss franc The Canadian dollar The Australian dollar And the New Zealand dollar we then have a huge list of exotic currencies, that are basically all the currencies of smaller or emerging economies. The most traded exotic currencies, which have now acquired an important role in the world economy, are The Hong Kong dollar The Singapore dollar The Turkish lira The Danish krona The Norwegian krona The Swedish krona And the South African rand Other important currencies to keep into consideration for their huge economies are the Chinese renminbi, the Indian rupee, the Brazilian real, the Russian ruble, and the Mexican peso. 41% of world trades are made in US dollars. 30% of world trades are made in euros. 12% of the world trades are made in Japanese yen. The remaining 17% of world trades are made in other currencies. Currencies consist of three letters. The first two letters represent the country of reference, while the last represents the name of the currency. Let's see some examples for the major currencies. This is the breakdown for the US dollar. This is the breakdown for the British pound. This is the breakdown for the Japanese yen. This is the breakdown for the Swiss franc. This is the breakdown for the Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, and New Zealand dollar. The only exception to this rule is the euro. In the forex market, currencies are traded in the form of pairs. In a pair, 
the first one represents the base currency, while the second one represents the quoted currency. The base currency always equals to 1, while the value of the quoted currency is always equal to the price found on the chart. Let's take as an example the currency pair euro US dollar at the price of 1.1750. The euro is the base currency, while the dollar is the quoted currency. If the price of the chart is 1.1750, it means that 1 euro will cost $1.1750. The Japanese yen is the only currency that is always quoted. Trading in the forex market is the simultaneous buying of one currency and the selling of the other. If you decide to buy dollar yen, you are automatically buying the dollar and selling the yen. This mechanism is crucial to understand. When buying the dollar yen pair, your analysis should indicate that the yen is weak against the dollar. It is essential that there are strong confluences, in which demonstrate that the dollar is stronger than the yen. In the forex market you have the option of both buying and selling a specific currency pair. Buying a currency pair means, that you are always buying the base currency, and selling the quoted currency. While selling a currency pair means, that you are selling the base currency, and buying the quoted currency. In the forex market, selling a currency pair is as simple as buying a currency pair. The forex market has no rules for selling, and the mechanism is as simple as when you decide to buy a certain asset. For example, by selling the pair euro Australian dollar, we are speculating that the Australian dollar is stronger than the euro. When buying, you speculate on the strength of the base currency, while when you sell, you speculate on the strength of the quoted currency. Major currency pairs are all the pairs that contain the US dollar, and they are the most traded pairs by new traders, making them the most liquid pairs in the market. Currency pairs that do not contain the US dollar are called cross pairs. The most liquid cross pairs are called minor pairs, and are those that contain the euro, the yen and the pound. Exotic pairs, on the other hand, are pairs formed by a major currency united to a currency of an emerging economy, such as Brazil, Mexico or Singapore. Exotic pairs have the highest spreads, because they are traded by less traders and therefore have less liquidity. The euro-dollar pair is the most liquid in the market, and represents 30% of the total daily volume of the forex market. The pound-dollar pair is less liquid but more volatile, than the euro-dollar pair. The British pound, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar are part of the British Commonwealth, and they are all base currencies against the US dollar. The Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar are also known as commodity pairs, because their economies are rich in natural resources. Currency pairs, like people, have their own specific and different characteristics. They have different characteristics because different people like to invest in different currency pairs, and the movements reflect their different personalities. All professional traders have preferences and reasons for the currency pairs they have decided to invest in. It is important to choose specific currency pairs to focus on. To be successful in the forex market, it is advisable to initially study only one single currency pair at a time. Gradually, as you gain more experience, you will be able to insert a second currency pair to focus on, then a third, and then a fourth. Professional traders create a watch list, that is a list of all their favorite pairs to study that are saved on their analysis platform, and constantly monitor them to take advantage of the various market opportunities. It is important to always filter currency pairs, entering in the market only when strong setups are formed. We suggest opening a maximum of two trades at a time, even though focusing on just one is the best choice. The Forex market is divided into three main sessions, the Asian session, the European session and the American session. Sessions are essential to understand, in order to select the hours in which you want to invest depending on where you live, what type of trader you decide to be, what type of volatility you prefer, and which currency pairs you have chosen to focus on. Each pair moves differently during each of the three sessions, and that is why there are different techniques to use, for the different moments of the market. The Asian session is the initial session of the trading week. This session starts at 11 p.m. and closes at 8 a.m. GMT. The main economic center that drives this session is Tokyo, however other important economic centers have an important role in this session, such as China, Australia, New Zealand, and Russia. Tokyo is the center of the Asian session, as it provides the largest volume of trading positions. The Asian session has the lowest volatility of the three sessions. It is also defined as the most calm and silent of the three. During this session, price often fluctuates in small ranges of space, also known as consolidation. Breakouts are very rare in this session, so a breakout trading strategy is not recommended. Breakouts can occur when there are high-impact news releases. In this session, however, different range trading strategies can be applied, 
which are used by a lot of professional traders. Range trading strategies, means to simply sell at resistance, and buy at support. The European session is the most volatile session of the three, especially at the opening with the London session. In this session we can encounter sharp reversals, and often even the largest movements of the day. This is the session that generates the most pips on average. During this session we find true, but also false breakouts of the current support and resistance levels of the Asian session. In this session you can use breakout trading strategies, but above all trend trading is the best, opening trades in the direction of the short-term trend mostly found on the 1-hour time frame. The session starts at 7 a.m. and finishes at 4 p.m. GMT. The American session is the second most volatile session of the three. The economic center that runs this session is New York. Other important economic centers in this session are Canada and Mexico. This session starts off at noon and finishes at 8 p.m. GMT. In this session we often find high-impact news releases, causing volatile price movements especially for the US dollar and the Canadian dollar. The most intense moments in the market are during the overlapping sessions. The American session has its greatest liquidity, during the overlap with the European session. Overlap means that two sessions are open at the same time. There are two overlaps, one between the Asian session and then the European session, and the other between the European session and the American session. There is no overlap between the American session and the Asian session. The overlap between the European session and the American session, is the busiest and most liquid time in the market. Both sessions are active in these four hours, and it is the most volatile time of the day, and at the same time the most risky. Volatility lovers keep an eye on these four hours, especially for the amount of financial data that is released. A pip can be defined as the smallest price change, and it represents the unit of measurement for all currency pairs. A pip represents the fourth decimal place for all the currency pairs, except for those containing the Japanese yen, where one pip is equal to the second decimal place. In some cases brokers and chart platforms may also show the fifth decimal place, that does not need to be calculated. To calculate price fluctuations, we always start from the fourth decimal place. Let's see some practical examples to clarify our ideas. In this first example we have a total of 8 pips. In this second example we have a total of 25 pips. In this third example we have a total of 473 pips. In this fourth example we have a total of 3,978 pips. Now let's see some examples for the Japanese yen. In this first example we have a total of 4 pips. In this second example we have a total of 19 pips. In this third example we have a total of 750 pips. In this fourth example we have a total of 2,433 pips. Let's see some practical examples to calculate the variation of pips from an initial price to a final price. A change from the initial price of 1.1405 to the price of 1.1409, is equivalent to an increase of 4 pips. A change from the initial price of 1.1405 to the price 1.1392, is equivalent to a decrease of 13 pips. Let's now look at an example for the Japanese yen. A change from the initial price of 123.47, to the price 123.67, is equivalent to an increase of 20 pips. A pip, Therefore, is the smallest unit of measurement in currency pairs, which allows us to calculate the length of the various price fluctuations. In most financial markets, for each asset, you will find a price to buy and a price to sell. The price to buy is called the ask price, and it is the higher price of the two. The price to sell is called the bid price, and it is the lower price of the two. The difference between the ask price and the bid price is known as the spread. The spread is simply the broker's commission. The term volume refers to the total number of positions, that have been opened during a given period of time. The term liquidity, refers to the level of rapidity, with which an asset can be either bought or sold, at its current market price. Volume and liquidity are considered interrelated, because the trading volume is an indicator of the total liquidity in an asset. A higher trade volume, indicates a greater overall market interest for a particular asset, as well as an indication of a high liquidity level. Assets with higher liquidity are getting traded more frequently and more rapidly, than the ones with lower volume. A lower trade volume indicates a low overall market interest. Low volume assets are being traded less frequently, and therefore have a higher volatility. The volume of the price can be analyzed through the shadows of the candles, often found at resistance, and support levels, indicating new volume of orders for a potential reversal. Liquidity is simply the total number of volume, active in a given asset. 
volatility, on the other hand, represents the speed of price movement. Once the volume of an asset establishes a winner between bulls and bears, it will therefore accelerate in an upward or downward direction, which is defined as the volatility of the price. When the prices of interbank quotes change quickly, it means that there is a phase of high volatility. The highest level of volatility occurs when fundamental news are released. High liquidity allows traders to open and close positions very quickly, this happens because there will always be someone with an opposite position, which will generate the necessary liquidity to be able to close the position. The Forex market is the most liquid market in the world, and any position can be closed instantly. The higher the liquidity, the lower the volatility. The lower the liquidity, the higher the volatility. Liquidity directly affects the technical analysis of a given asset. High liquidity allows the price to correctly reflect technical patterns, while low liquidity does not allow the price to move correctly, creating confusion and having to rely mainly on fundamental analysis. Between the 15th of December and the 15th of January, the Forex market suffers a drastic loss of liquidity, due to a sale of securities by companies and banks, in order to reach their annual objectives, together with a lower general activity due to the Christmas holidays. This leads the Forex market to dry up, and to have a loss of orders, which cause the price fluctuation to increase, becoming unpredictable and unreliable in some situations. At this specific time of year, it is recommended that you avoid or minimize your risk percentage. Another situation in which a lack of liquidity may be encountered is on Fridays from 3 p.m. onwards, before the weekly close of the price. The Forex market, as mentioned above, is the most liquid market in the world. This means that it is the most stable market today, and one that most reflects the technical patterns of all financial markets. The overall liquidity in the Forex market guarantees reliability and trust in traders. It is difficult to manipulate the Forex market, unlike other markets, thanks to the large liquidity it possesses. The average daily range, also abbreviated as ADR, is the daily average movement of a specific currency pair measured in pips, and it is essential to analyze, when choosing the currency pairs to focus on, as well as identifying realistic targets for a given period. The best website, to analyze the average daily range of currency pairs is investing. On investing, go on tools, and select Forex volatility. On this page, you will see the average daily range of all currency pairs, for a specific period that you wish. Near the currency pairs, you can see a number, that is equivalent to the average daily range. This number indicates the length of the movement of a specific currency pair, measured in pips. The number does not refer to only one direction but both. If you see an ADR of 80 pips, it could mean that 50 pips are bearish, and 30 pips are bullish. The average total movement of the day is 80 pips. By selecting the currency pair that you wish, in this case Eurodollar, you will also have the chart to analyze the volatility of the previous days. As well as the most volatile times of the day. And the most volatile days of the week. This tool is very important, in order to understand the best moments to enter the market. Let's say we want to analyze the average daily range of the past 20 weeks. We go back at the top and insert 20 weeks, and then click on Calculate. We can see that the pairs with the highest average daily range are Euro Australian Dollar, Euro Canadian Dollar, Euro New Zealand Dollar, Pound Australian Dollar, Pound Canadian Dollar, Pound Yen, and Pound New Zealand Dollar. The lowest average daily range pairs are Euro Yen, Euro Pound, Euro Swiss Franc, Australian Dollar Swiss Franc, Australian Dollar Canadian Dollar, Canadian Dollar Swiss Franc, Euro Dollar, and Dollar Swiss Franc. We can also see, that the exotic currency pairs have a very high average daily range, because they are less traded, and when assets have low liquidity they are much more volatile and risky. The maximum number of weeks that you can analyze with this tool is 54. It is important to constantly use this tool because the market changes continuously, and the average daily range will change as well during the weeks for certain assets. Some pairs such as the Asian ones have usually a low ADR, while pairs that contain the euro and the pound have usually a very high ADR. The pound is the currency that has on average the highest ADR, and is therefore the most volatile currency, in which it is possible to generate greater daily profit but also greater losses. When trading pound pairs, it is recommended to keep larger stop losses due to the many fluctuations that will occur. The pound is a good currency for swing trading. Pound New Zealand Dollar, Euro New Zealand Dollar, and Pound Australian Dollar, are three examples of pairs with a very high ADR, therefore very volatile. These pairs do not always respect the technical levels, and different gaps may be encountered between the various sessions, 
at the opening of the market on Sunday, and at the closure of the daily price. Euro pound and euro Swiss franc are the quietest pairs. These pairs have a small ADR, therefore they have less volatility. You can place smaller stop loss levels, and at the same time get mediocre profit in the short term. The average daily range is also used to set realistic targets. If you see a high probability setup on euro Swiss franc, you cannot think that in one day the pair will move 200 pips in profit towards your target, when it only has an average daily movement of 50 pips. The analysis of the average daily range is essential to decide which currency pairs to focus on, and especially which ones to avoid. If you are a trader who likes volatility and has a low risk tolerance, you will want to focus on high average daily range pairs. If you are a trader that does not like volatility and has a high risk tolerance, you will want to focus on low average daily range pairs. It must be understood that all currency pairs go through cycles and sessions, and what works with one pair may not work in another. When entering the market, it is necessary to have concrete confluences by setting targets that reflect the average daily range of the currency pair. In the beginning, it is recommended to focus on one, maximum two pairs. Professional traders often have a watch list that does not go beyond four pairs. For example, by choosing two currency pairs, one could be more volatile and the other less volatile, or a major and a minor pair. By choosing three currency pairs, one could be a major pair, one could be a minor pair, and one could be a cross pair. It all depends on your preferences. The average daily range will help in the selection of currency pairs, by also being able to understand the days of the week, and the times of the day in which greater volatility may be encountered, to maximize your trading strategy. The take profit is a pending order, that automatically blocks the profit from the current open position. The take profit is used as a profit target, and when the price reaches the set level, the trade will automatically close in profit. The take profit represents a higher price when buying an asset, and a lower price when deciding to sell an asset. Take profit targets should always be set near sensitive areas, such as support and resistance levels. We must learn to exit from a trade at the right moment, especially when the market reaches a phase of reversal or consolidation. If you open a trade for a few hours, but cannot constantly follow the price movements, you can simply place a take profit order and take care of something else. The use of this tool allows traders not to be continuously attached to the chart to manually close a trading position, but it allows to set targets that will automatically close the trade. Setting a take profit also helps to eliminate emotions involved in the trade. When a position is in profit and reaches a sensitive level, you might think that price could go beyond the identified target and consequently generate more profit. We always suggest to lock in profits and follow the profit target that has been set from the start in order to avoid making serious mistakes related to greed. It is important to set a realistic take profit target by studying the average daily range of the analyzed asset to understand how long it will take to reach the identified target. The risk reward ratio is another fundamental concept that you must know how to apply in order to constantly gain positive results. We recommend a take profit that is minimum equivalent to the same size of the stop loss, therefore with a risk reward ratio of 1 to 1. A risk reward ratio of 1 to 1 means that you risk 10 euros to earn 10 euros. The stop loss must never be greater than the take profit because in the long term it will potentially damage your trading portfolio. We will study the risk reward ratio in more detail in the risk management section. A stop loss is a pending order that traders place in advance to limit their potential losses. If price goes against your analysis, the stop loss will automatically close the trade, protecting your capital from further losses. The stop loss consists in a lower price when you buy, and a higher price when you decide to sell. The stop loss will help to eliminate the temptation to keep your trade open, in the hope of getting back into profit, even where there are clear signals to exit from the trade. Hope is an emotion and emotions are not accepted when trading. The stop loss helps to cut losses, and avoid being attached to one specific trade. If the trade doesn't follow your analysis, cut losses and analyze a better opportunity. The market has endless opportunities. To set a correct stop loss, it becomes essential to analyze the average daily range of the chosen asset, the price per pip, the time frame and the risk reward. The stop loss is not a tool that should be scary, indeed it is essential to use it to minimize losses and protect yourself in unstable market situations. It is recommended to set the stop loss 20 to 30 pips under the previous low if you decide to buy, and 20 to 30 pips above the previous high if you decide to sell. 
Close to the release of financial news, it is essential to open small positions with larger stop losses, to reduce risk and allow bigger price fluctuations under high volatility circumstances. The stop loss can also be moved to the entry price when the trade is in profit. This action is called moving the stop loss to break even. By moving the stop loss to break even the risk for the trade will be zero, so there will be no loss. Once the trade proceeds in profit of 30 to 50 pips, you can also decide to move the stop loss in profit, ensuring a minimum amount of pips of profit in case the price goes against your trade. The trailing stop loss is a combination between the take profit and the stop loss, and it is used to minimize losses and automatically secure profit for any given position. The trailing stop loss is simply a stop loss that automatically advances if the trade proceeds in profit. Instead of moving the stop loss manually, it automatically follows the direction of your analysis to lock in profits. You can set it with the amount of pips that you want, let's say for example 30 pips. If a trade is in profit of 200 pips and you have added a trailing stop loss of 30 pips, it means that if the market goes 30 pips against the trade, the trade will close automatically at 170 pips. If, on the other hand, the trade proceeds to 250 pips in profit, the trailing stop loss will automatically increase and protect the position up to 220 pips. The trailing stop loss is a dynamic stop loss that automatically follows the trend of the trade. The trailing stop loss can be set right away or it can be added over the course of the trade. Let's say that we open a bullish trade with a stop loss of 30 pips and we set a trailing stop loss of 10 pips. This means that if price goes in profit of 10 pips, the current stop loss of 30 pips will be automatically moved up to 20 pips. If price then goes against you, you will lose 20 pips instead of 30. Market orders are simply trades that are being executed instantly. Opening a market order means to buy and sell an asset at the current market price. The trade will be filled immediately through the bid and the ask price. If you want to buy an asset, your order will be filled at the ask price, whilst if you want to sell an asset, your order will be filled at the bid price. The difference between these two numbers is the spread, also known as the broker's commission. If you see a nice setup, the fastest and most common way to enter the market is through a market order. If there is a phase of high volatility, the interbank quotes of the bid and the ask price will change fast, so you cannot control the exact price in which your trade will be filled at. You will be filled at a random price in that moment. The best time to enter precise market orders is when there is not much volatility. If during high volatility phases you want to enter at a precise market price, then the best orders to use are the pending stop and pending limit orders. These orders will fill you at the exact price that you wish. We are going to analyze the pending orders in the next video. Pending orders are the most precise orders, because they are filled at the exact price that you desire. Pending orders turn into market orders, when the price touches the level of your pending order, and therefore your trade will be active. Pending orders are divided into, buy and sell stop, and buy and sell limit. The buy and sell stop orders are pending orders used to continue the current trend, and are placed above the price for bullish orders, and below the current price for bearish orders. These types of orders are widely used by breakout traders, looking for the continuation of the current trend. Buy and sell limit orders are pending orders used to speculate in the reversal of the current trend, looking for a higher entry point for bearish orders, and lower entry point for bullish orders, to obtain a favorable risk-reward setup. Limit orders are used by professional traders to enter the market at an optimal price level, and to be able to profit in the shortest possible time, positioning the stop loss at a strategic level, to obtain a good risk-reward ratio. Traders who mostly use limit orders are trend traders, and usually use these orders to add positions to the main trend, implementing a pullback trading strategy. The ability to open positions larger than your deposit, is due to the financial leverage, also known as the financial multiplier. The leverage is therefore a mechanism, that allows the trader to open a bigger position, than he actually could with its current capital. By increasing the leverage, your profit may be greater, but at the same time your risk will increase as well. The leverage works exactly like the speed of your car. Driving at a high speed is risky. For this reason, each driver chooses the speed based on its experience, on the road conditions and on the traffic laws. We suggest beginners to use a minimum leverage, in order to avoid excessive risks. As your trading experience increases and your system generates positive results, you can then start increasing your leverage. A price movement of 100 pips, in many currency pairs, represents a rise or fall of 1 cent. This demonstrates how important it is to manage the leverage correctly. In a movement of only 1 cent, which therefore represents 100 pips, inexperienced traders can lose all of their capital, 
if they do not learn how to manage the leverage correctly. Most psychological issues and mistakes come from a wrong usage of leverage and position sizing. Leverage is simply a loan provided by the broker when opening a trading position. This is possible thanks to an intermediary bank that provides and guarantees liquidity to traders, in order to make the small fluctuations much more desirable and profitable, especially for retail traders with small capital. You can change your leverage in your account settings, when logging in your broker's website. Leverage is without a doubt a great opportunity that the Forex market offers, but before increasing it you have to build a solid system, develop an unemotional attitude, and gather lots of experience. It is important to understand that a high leverage represents a high risk, not only a high reward. Leverage is very dangerous, especially when associated with very large positions. A leverage greater than 1 to 200 can cause psychological pressure and increased stress. A 1 to 30 leverage is very good to start off with. Professionals usually use a maximum leverage of 1 to 100. A written strict strategy will help to eliminate the involvement of emotions or temptations, at the opening of the trading positions, following a correct risk management. The margin is the amount of capital that you need to have on your account, in order to open a specific trade position. The size of a trading position, consists in the combination of the lots and the leverage. It is important to calculate correctly the margin, to avoid damaging your trading capital. The formula to calculate the margin consists in, the base currency unit, divided by the leverage. Let's now calculate the margin for a long position of one lot on pound US dollar, having a leverage of 1 to 100. The base currency is the pound. The unit is one lot. One lot is equal to 100,000 units. This means, that the base currency unit, is 100,000 pounds. The leverage in this case is 100. So 100,000 pounds, divided by 100, equals to 1,000. This means, that you are required to have 1,000 pounds, in order to open one lot on pound US dollar with a leverage of 1 to 100. Let's now calculate the margin, for a short position of 0.1 lot on US dollar Canadian dollar, having a leverage of 1 to 500. The base currency is the US dollar. The unit is 0.1 lot. 0.1 lot is equal to 10,000 units. This means, that the base currency unit, is $10,000. The leverage in this case is 500. So $10,000, divided by 500, equals to 20. This means, that you are required to have $20, in order to open a 0.1 lot on US dollar Canadian dollar using a leverage of 1 to 500. A high leverage allows to open larger positions having a much smaller margin, this obviously will lead to a greater risk. If you open a position that is too large for the available capital, you could risk losing everything in a short period of time, and therefore receive a margin call from the broker, to warn you that the available capital is about to run out. Brokers often send margin calls to clients that exceed a 50% drawdown. When studying technical analysis and analyzing price movements through your computer, you will come across three main types of charts. The candlestick chart, the line chart, the bar chart. The candlestick chart gives us the most information and displays price action in the clearest possible manner. The candles allow us to see at what level the price opened and closed, as well as the highest and lowest points, through the upper and lower shadows. The shadows are also known as wicks. A bullish candle is often represented with a green color, and has the opening price at the bottom, and the closing price at the top. The bearish candle is often represented with the red color, and has the opening price at the top, and the closing price at the bottom. The volume of the candle is equivalent to the body of the candle. The shadows, on the other hand, are equivalent to the upper and lower lines, that indicate how far the price has extended in that precise period of time. We will deepen the study of candles in the following video. The bar chart is very similar to the candlestick chart. The bar chart shows the opening and closing price, along with their upper and lower shadows. The only difference between the candlestick chart and the bar chart, is the style in which the price is represented. The line chart is different from the previous two, and focuses mainly on the closing prices. The line joins the various points that represent the closing prices. The line chart is very important to be able to accurately plot support and resistance key levels, eliminating excessive price noise. Price noise refers to fluctuations that have no logic and no particular volume, and which could only confuse our ideas. The line chart is also an extremely simplified method in viewing the overall trend of the market. The line chart tracks price history in a very tidy manner, but it is not practical to trade with. It can certainly be a good chart for investors, who want to open long-term positions. 
the time frame represents the period of a given candle. The main time frames are, the monthly, weekly, daily, 4 hours, 1 hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes and 1 minute. The choice of the time frame relies mainly on your trading strategy. The candle, therefore, represents the movement of the price in a specific time interval. In the monthly time frame, each candle represents a month of fluctuations. Over the 4 hour time frame, each candle represents 4 hours of fluctuations and so on. Using a higher time frame will give you a complete view on the direction of price of a given asset. Lower time frames can confuse your analysis if used incorrectly. The monthly time frame acts as a satellite in space, showing the complete picture of the Earth. While the minor time frames act as if they were continents, states, regions, provinces and municipalities. Essentially lowering the time frames is the same as zooming into the bigger time frames for a much more precise analysis of price movement. If you were to move from municipality to municipality, without knowing the direction, you could easily get lost, despite the fact that the destination is close. The same is true in the financial markets. If you only rely on the smaller time frames, without paying attention to the larger time intervals you can easily get lost. The higher time frames give us a complete mapping of the price movement. It is crucial to always use a top-down analysis, meaning that first you have to analyze price movements on the higher time frames and then gradually lower the time frames to find the best possible trade execution. We will analyze in detail the top-down analysis in the next videos. Supports and resistances are key areas to recognize when analyzing the chart of an asset. Support and resistance are the areas where price is often rejected. The support zone is found below the current market price, while the resistance is found above the current market price. The identification of these areas is absolutely vital to understand the direction of the market, and above all, to understand the supply and demand of the market participants. Supports are also known as demand zones, in which the demand exceeds the supply, pushing the price up. Resistances, on the other hand, are also known as supply zones, in which the supply exceeds the demand, pushing the price down. Most traders, before considering any type of trading, wait for the price to enter these sensitive areas, where there is the greatest activity from the market participants. The support acts like the floor, while the resistance acts like the ceiling. The price that is rejected around a support level, will have a potential reversal in an uptrend. The price that is rejected around a resistance level, will have a potential reversal in a bearish trend. If the price breaks a support level, there will be a potential bearish trend continuation. If the price breaks a resistance level, there will be a potential bullish continuation. The support and resistance levels are also identified as psychological zones, or sensitive zones, because they are often found near round price levels such as 1.1500. Price levels with round numbers ending in 00 or 50, represent important zones because millions of orders will be placed around these prices, which will cause the price to move accordingly. In these zones there will be traders who place profit targets just before the current key price, other traders will instead enter the market when the price is reached, while others will place limit orders, or stop orders, just above or below, to try and maximize all the length of the price movement. As we can see, these price levels are filled with liquidity, and before a potential price continuation or reversal takes place, it may take a while to see who from the buyers and sellers, has imposed themselves taking the control of the market. For us retail traders it is essential to be patient, and carefully analyze price movements, in order to follow the current market sentiment. The price will not immediately break a psychological zone, but it will have corrections to accumulate liquidity before following the new direction. The same is true before having a trend reversal. The identification of a support or a resistance zone, correlated to a key price level, already represents a good basis to work on. Together with these two confluences, a fundamental analysis must be combined for the analyzed assets, as well as price action analysis, technical chart patterns, and lastly an indicator can be combined as a further confirmation. A support and resistance zone is created with a minimum of two bounces. The third bounce is often the best time to enter the market. If the price breaks above the resistance zone, and confirms a bullish continuation move, with a retest of the previous zone, this zone would transform from resistance level to support level. Should the price break below the support zone, and confirm a continuation bearish move, with a retest on the previous zone, 
this zone would transform from a support level to a resistance level. Price can move sideways in a consolidation phase, or vertically, in a bullish or bearish direction. When price moves in a certain direction, it is defined that it is moving following either an upward bullish trend, or a downward bearish trend. If price is creating higher highs and higher lows, this means that we are currently in a bullish trend. The green lines represent the impulse of price towards the upside, instead the red lines, represent price corrections before continuing with its main trend. It is important to understand that price always moves in waves. We have a first phase of push, and then we have a second phase of rest. If price is creating lower lows and lower highs, this means that we are currently in a bearish trend. The red lines represent the impulse of price towards the downside, instead the green lines, represent price corrections before continuing with its main trend. A trend that follows a certain direction, can be sustained thanks to the total liquidity of the participants, and traders who push it in that precise direction. Many traders use the phrase the trend is your friend, which means that it is definitely a good choice, to open positions that follow the main trend. Once we have identified the main trend, the position should always follow the trend, therefore in an uptrend we should only open bullish positions, and in a downtrend we should only open bearish positions. Corrections can be traded when a trader gathers more trading experience. It is very important to identify the major trend on the bigger timeframes, because it will give you the complete picture of where price is heading at. There can be different trends that occur on smaller timeframes, but you should never rely on them for the long term. The absence of a trend is also known as a consolidation. An absence of a trend is formed, when the price is trapped between a resistance and a support. A phase of consolidation found at support, is also known as accumulation, instead, a phase of consolidation found at resistance, is also known as distribution. In a consolidation phase, you should open bullish positions near the support level, and bearish positions near the resistance level. Price action is the analysis of price over a given period of time. In trading, the concept of price action, refers to a methodology based on the study of the price movement. The price movement creates specific candle and pattern formations, that are continuously repeated, giving us potential signals to predict future movements. Price action is the study of how traders have previously acted, as well as their beliefs in a specific period of time. Reading price action is like reading a book. It is important to read what price closures are telling you and act consequently. Do not anticipate any price movement. Price action is best used when studying it on the 4-hour and 1-day timeframes, because on these time intervals, just one or two candles are enough to give us a trading signal. When we analyze the price action of our chart, we must always take into consideration the main direction of the trend, together with areas where price could react strongly such as key support and resistance levels. Candlesticks are the purest form of price action, that provide a visual picture of what is occurring in the market, and suggest the future movement of prices. Candlesticks give a lot of information, and you must learn to read them the same way you read the words of a book. The study of candlesticks is a very ancient discipline that developed in Japan, to be able to understand the future trend of the financial markets. Japanese traders used candlesticks to analyze the first Ajima rice market. Candles can be bullish or bearish. Both candles have an open, close, high and low point. The highest and lowest point of each candle is always the same. The shadows are the highest and lowest lines of the candles, also known as the tails, or wicks. Let's analyze some of the basic candlesticks that you will find on the chart. These type of candles indicate a tie between buyers and sellers. No one has managed to dominate over each other. These type of candles indicate that buyers were in control of the market, but sellers managed to impose themselves, and pushed price back down regaining control of the market. These type of candles indicate that the sellers were in control of the market, but buyers managed to impose themselves, and pushed price back up regaining control of the market. These type of candles represent a strong continuation of their respective trend. Doji candlesticks are one of the most important, representing equilibrium between supply and demand in the market. These candlesticks give a clear trend reversal signal, and it is really important to be able to identify them. Doji candlesticks have a small body that appears as a thin line, and also have the same opening and closing price, this indicates current indecision by the market participants. When a doji is formed on the chart, you must give special attention to the preceding candlesticks. You must also understand if price is fluctuating near key support or resistance levels, or if it is following a strong trend, 
for a major confluence to enter the trade. Doji candles indicate indecision, meaning that neither buyers or sellers were able to gain control, with a result that is essentially a draw between the bulls and the bears. The candle moves quickly in one direction, or in both, and closes very near to the opening price. There are four main types of doji candles, the long-legged doji, the dragonfly doji, the gravestone doji and the four-price doji. The long-legged doji has a long upper and lower shadow which is almost equal in length. This doji represents a balance between buyers and sellers, and if found near resistance or support levels, it could indicate a potential reversal. The dragonfly doji has a long lower shadow, and indicates that sellers moved the prices lower during the session, and by the end, buyers pushed price back up to the opening price. It has a very small or even absent upper shadow. The gravestone doji is the opposite of the dragonfly doji, and it has a long upper shadow and an absent lower shadow. This candle shows that buyers moved the price up during the session, and by the end, sellers pushed price back down at the opening price. The four price doji has no upper and lower shadows, and if it does it is really short. This candle is very rare and gives rise to potential trend reversals. This candlestick is mainly found in the lower timeframes. It is important to always ask yourself specific questions when observing the charts. What is the candlestick closure communicating to me? Does it confirm or contradict the previous candles? Did the candle break above resistance or below support? Does the candle confirm my analysis? Understanding what price action is telling you is the most important part of trading. Continuation chart patterns are technical price behaviors, in which, after a short consolidation phase, price continues to follow the current main trend. The main continuation chart patterns are flags and wedges. Flags are short phases of consolidation, that occur in the opposite direction of the main trend, and are characterized by two phases. In the first phase, we have a rapid rise or fall of prices depending on the current trend. In the second phase, we have oscillatory price movements, contained in a limited range of price, also known as the flag. The flag is therefore tilted downwards or upwards, depending on the current trend, and bounded by two parallel lines which represent the support and the resistance levels. Once the flag has finished its short correction, price will resume following its initial trend. Wedges are continuation patterns, that can be found in both an uptrend and a downtrend. Wedges form when price corrects from the current trend, and moves into a phase of price consolidation, creating highs and lows that become tighter and tighter. The bullish wedges have the apex of the triangle pointing downwards. The bearish wedges have the apex of the triangle pointing upwards. Once a continuation pattern has been identified, it is important to understand the possible targets of the trade, meaning to study where to place the take profit and the stop loss correctly. To determine the take profit of a continuation pattern, simply calculate the length of the bullish or bearish movement before the consolidation phase, and double it. The stop loss will always be positioned above or below the pattern that has been created. Reversal chart patterns in technical analysis, are graphic figures that create an inversion of the current trend. To trade reversal patterns, it is therefore necessary, that there is a reference trend to be reversed. The importance of these type of patterns varies according to their size and duration. The longer the time of their formation, the greater the probability of a trend reversal. The main reversal patterns are the double top, the double bottom, the triple top, the triple bottom, the head and shoulders, and the inverse head and shoulders. If the reversal pattern is not confirmed by price action, and does not follow strictly the rules, we could therefore have a strong signal of continuation of the trend. Enter the market only when the pattern is complete, and price action confirms the new direction. Never anticipate its formation, but instead trade what you see. The reversal patterns formed near important support and resistance levels, will give a greater chance of success. The double top, also known as double confirmation of resistance, can be found at the end of an uptrend, and it is an excellent signal of a bearish reversal. It consists of two highs, the second should be slightly lower than the first. The greater the time frame of the pattern, and the greater the probability of success of the trade. The double bottom, also known as double confirmation of support, can be found at the end of a downtrend, and it is an excellent signal of a bullish reversal. It consists of two lows, the second should be slightly higher than the first. The greater the time frame of the pattern, and the greater the probability of success of the trade. The triple top has exactly the same rules as the double top pattern, but before we have the actual reversal of the trend, we need a third confirmation bounce of resistance. The triple bottom has exactly the same rules as the double bottom, 
but before we have the actual reversal of the trend, we need a third confirmation bounce of support. The head and shoulders pattern, is a classic bearish formation that is identified at the end of an uptrend. The pattern is formed by a first higher high which will be the left shoulder, then a second higher high also known as the head, which will be the highest point of the pattern, and finally price will create a lower high also known as the right shoulder, that will be lower than the head and the left shoulder. The inverse head and shoulders pattern, is a classic bullish formation that is identified at the end of a downtrend. The pattern is formed by a first lower low which will be the left shoulder, then a second lower low also known as the head, which will be the lowest point of the pattern, and finally price will create a higher low also known as the right shoulder, that will be higher than the head and the left shoulder. Once we identify one of the patterns, it is important to identify realistic targets, this means calculating where to place the take profit and stop loss correctly. To determine the take profit, simply measure 70% of the total pips of the length of the pattern, and double it in the direction of the new trend. 70% is a good target, because price moves in waves and there could be some short-term retests of the breakout, however, price can also reach 100% of the total length of the figure. The stop loss will always be positioned above or below of the pattern that has been created, depending obviously by the trend direction. A gap is simply when price opens above or below the previous price closure. Gaps are mainly found when trading the stock market, but they may also be found in the forex market. Major currency pairs don't create gaps that often, whilst cross pairs, and exotic pairs do create gaps more often. Gaps can occur between the various sessions, at the daily closure of price, and at the reopening of the market after the weekend. One of the major currencies that likes to open with gaps is the New Zealand dollar, in fact it is defined by some, as an exotic major pair. Exotic pairs create the most amount of gaps, because they are much more volatile. When trading exotic pairs it is recommended to keep a low percentage of risk, with a stop-loss positioned at a strategic distance, giving space to the price movement. When gaps are formed, they tend to be filled back up or down. This may happen immediately or it may take some time, but in both cases it will get filled. If a gap occurs and it is getting filled immediately at the reopening of the market, or after the daily closure, be aware that spreads may be very high, and you should avoid entering the trade. If instead the market doesn't show signs to fill in the gap immediately, it will then act as a future target, when price will confirm its new direction. If you are a short-term trader, be aware of gaps because they might temporarily influence your trade. If you are a long-term trader, gaps will not influence your trades because you have bigger targets. It all comes down to using a correct risk management for your trades. If you apply a correct risk management, you will not have any problems even when gaps are formed. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at market cycles. Market cycles are mainly divided into two main categories. The market trend and the market consolidation. The market trend can either be bullish or bearish. The bullish trend is formed, when price creates higher highs and higher lows. The bearish trend is formed, when price creates lower lows and lower highs. The bullish trend is also known as advancing or markup, while the bearish trend is also known as declining or markdown. At the end of a trend, price will move in a phase of consolidation. When the consolidation is formed at the bottom of a bearish trend, this is known as accumulation. When the consolidation is formed at the top of a bullish trend, this is known as distribution. Consolidation phases are simply a liquidity range for supply or demand, before moving in the new direction. During market trends it is suggested, to only trade in the direction of the main trend. During consolidation ranges, you can instead buy and sell at support and resistance levels. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at market ranges. Market ranges are also known as market consolidation. As we saw in the previous video, market ranges at the end of a bearish trend are also known as accumulation, whilst market ranges at the end of a bullish trend are also known as distribution. Market ranges are simply phases in which the price is resting, and gaining liquidity for the next movement. In market ranges, price is trapped between a support and resistance level. Traders can trade market ranges by buying at support, and selling at resistance. To enter a trade, it is always best to add other important confluences, such as oversold and overbought indicators, key price levels, financial data awareness, and price action confirmation. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at the double top chart pattern. This is a bearish chart pattern found at the end of a bullish trend, during a period of price action consolidation. Price proceeds to the upside until it's rejected by a resistance level, creating the first top of the pattern. Then price pushes back to the downside, 
and is rejected at the support level, creating a range of consolidation. Price then pushes back to the upside at the resistance level, creating the second top. The second top gives us a good confirmation of a strong key level and bearish momentum. When we have a clear price action confirmation we can enter a first trade. Price then pushes to the downside and breaks the support level. Once the support is broken, price retraces touching the previous level, that now has become resistance. When bearish price action confirmation is clear, we can enter a second trade. To calculate the target for the trades, we simply need to double the distance between the support and the resistance levels. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at the double bottom chart pattern. This is a bullish chart pattern found at the end of a bearish trend, during a period of price action consolidation. Price proceeds to the downside until it's rejected by a support level, creating the first bottom of the pattern. Then price pushes back to the upside, and is rejected at the resistance level, creating a range of consolidation. Price then pushes back to the downside at the support level, creating the second bottom. The second bottom gives us a good confirmation of a strong key level and bullish momentum. When we have a clear price action confirmation we can enter a first trade. Price then pushes to the upside and breaks the resistance level. Once the resistance is broken, price retraces touching the previous level, that now has become support. When bullish price action confirmation is clear, we can enter a second trade. To calculate the target for the trades, we simply need to double the distance between the support and the resistance. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the bullish breakout. Before having a breakout, price will be ranging between a support and resistance level. This phase is also known as market consolidation. For a breakout to occur, price must break either the support or resistance level. In this case we are looking at the bullish breakout, in other words we are looking at the breakout of the resistance level. Looking at the chart, price is moving upwards pushing towards the resistance. Price then breaks the resistance level, and retraces back for confirmation. Once price action confirms the new support level with bullish momentum, we can enter the trade. Price will now start a bullish trend reaching higher resistance levels. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the bearish breakout. Before having a breakout, price will be ranging between a support and a resistance level. This phase is also known as market consolidation. For a breakout to occur, price must break either the support or the resistance level. In this case we are looking at the bearish breakout, in other words we are looking at the breakout of the support level. Looking at the chart, price is moving downwards pushing towards the support. Price then breaks the support level, and retraces back for bearish confirmation. Once price action confirms the new resistance level with bearish momentum, we can enter the trade. Price will now start a bearish trend reaching lower support levels. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the bullish fake out. Before having a fake out, price will be ranging between a support and resistance level. This phase is also known as market consolidation. For a fake out to occur, price must break either the support or resistance level. In this case we are looking at the bullish fake out, in other words we are looking at the fake out of the resistance level. Looking at the chart, price is moving upwards pushing towards the resistance. Price then breaks the resistance level, and retraces back to the broken level for confirmation. Price action however doesn't confirm the bullish momentum, and breaks again the key level to the downside. Price then pushes up again to the resistance level, and confirms the bearish momentum with price action. Once price action has been confirmed, you can enter a trade and set your target to the support level. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the bearish fake out. Before having a fake out, price will be ranging between a support and resistance level. This phase is also known as market consolidation. For a fake out to occur, price must break either the support or resistance level. In this case we are looking at the bearish fake out, in other words we are looking at the fake out of the support level. Looking at the chart, price is moving downwards pushing towards the support. Price then breaks the support level, and retraces back to the broken level for confirmation. Price action however doesn't confirm the bearish momentum, and breaks again the key level to the upside. Price then pushes down again to the support level, and confirms the bullish momentum with price action. Once price action has been confirmed, you can enter a trade and set your target to the resistance level. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at the head and shoulders chart pattern. 
This is a bearish pattern found at the end of a bullish trend, during a period of price action consolidation. Price proceeds to the upside until it's rejected by a first resistance level, also known as the left shoulder. Then price pushes back to the downside, and is rejected at a support level, that will become the neckline of the chart pattern. Price then pushes back to the upside, higher than the left shoulder, creating the head of the chart pattern. The head of the head and shoulders, acts as a bearish divergence or also known as liquidity trap. Price then pushes back down to the neckline. Once again price is rejected from the neckline, and retraces to a lower resistance level creating the right shoulder. We can enter a first trade after price action confirmation. Price then pushes downwards and breaks the neckline. Once the neckline is broken, price retraces touching the previous support level, that now has become resistance. When bearish price action confirmation is clear, we can enter a second trade. To calculate the target for the trades, we simply need to double the distance between the head and the neckline. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at the inverse head and shoulders chart pattern. This is a bullish pattern found at the end of a bearish trend, during a period of price action consolidation. Price proceeds to the downside until it's rejected by a first support level, also known as the left shoulder. Then price pushes back to the upside and is rejected at a resistance level, that will become the neckline of the chart pattern. Price then pushes back to the downside, below the left shoulder, creating the head of the chart pattern. The head of the inverse head and shoulders acts as a bullish divergence or also known as liquidity trap. Price then pushes back up to the neckline. Once again price is rejected from the neckline, and retraces to a higher support level creating the right shoulder. We can enter a first trade after price action confirmation. Price then pushes upwards and breaks the neckline. Once broken the neckline, price retraces touching the previous resistance level, that now has become support. When bullish price action confirmation is clear, we can enter a second trade. To calculate the target for the trades, we simply need to double the distance between the head and the neckline. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze how to trade pullbacks in a bullish trend. First of all it is important to understand, that a bullish trend is created when price forms higher highs, and higher lows. A bullish trend line is a support zone, created by a minimum of two consecutive higher lows, that is drawn diagonally on the chart. In a bullish trend, we are going to only open trades following the main direction. This means that we are only going to look at buying the asset, at every new higher low formed. As we can see in the chart, price is pushing to the upside, and retracing to support after every push. Price always moves in waves, and this will help us to enter in the market with a good risk-reward ratio. When price retraces creating an opportunity to buy, we need a list of confluences to support our trading idea. The main confluences to look at, when buying for a continuation of the upside movement are The retest of support, retest of trend line, bullish price action confirmation, price key level, oversold indicator, and Fibonacci retracement to 50% or 61.8%. Another important factor to keep into consideration, is the awareness of important financial data that could be released. During a bullish trend it is always important to open positions following the upside momentum, because they will give the best risk-reward opportunity. Opening short positions during an uptrend, will usually give a risk-reward of 1 to 1, and provide much more risk. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze how to trade pullbacks in a bearish trend. First of all it is important to understand, that a bearish trend is created when price forms lower highs, and lower lows. A bearish trend line is a resistance zone, created by a minimum of two consecutive lower highs, that is drawn diagonally on the chart. In a bearish trend, we are going to only open trades following the main direction. This means that we are only going to look at selling the asset, at every new lower high formed. As we can see in the chart, price is pushing to the downside, and retracing to resistance after every push. Price always moves in waves, and this will help us to enter in the market with a good risk-reward ratio. When price retraces creating an opportunity to sell, we need a list of confluences to support our trading idea. The main confluences to look at, when selling for a continuation of the downside movement are The retest of resistance, retest of trend line, bearish price action confirmation, price key level, overbought indicator, and Fibonacci retracement to 50% or 61.8%. Another important factor to keep into consideration, is the awareness of important financial data that could be released. During a bearish trend it is always important to open positions following the downside momentum, because they will give the best risk-reward opportunity. 
opening long positions during a downtrend will usually give a risk reward of 1 to 1 and provide much more risk. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze how to trade a breakout after a bullish trend. First of all it is important to understand, that a bullish trend is created when price forms higher highs, and higher lows. A bullish trend line is a support zone, created by a minimum of two consecutive higher lows, that is drawn diagonally on the chart. In a bullish trend, we are going to only open trades following the main direction. This means that we are only going to look at buying the asset, at every new higher low formed. As we can see in the chart, price is pushing to the upside, and retracing to support after every push. Price always moves in waves, and this will help us to enter in the market with a good risk-reward ratio. During a bullish trend it is always important to open positions following the upside momentum, because they will give the best risk-reward opportunity. Opening short positions during an uptrend, will usually give a risk-reward of 1 to 1, and provide much more risk. Price keeps pushing to the upside, until it reaches the peak at an important resistance level, and retraces back to support. Price then pushes back up and creates a double top chart pattern, that indicates bearish pressure in the asset. Price pushes down and breaks the trend line and the current support level. Once price has broken the level, it retraces up retesting the new resistance. After having a clear bearish price action confirmation, we can enter the short trade. The target for the trade will be the next major support level, before having a potential retracement for a new short opportunity. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze how to trade pullbacks in a bearish trend. First of all it is important to understand, that a bearish trend is created when price forms lower highs, and lower lows. A bearish trend line is a resistance zone, created by a minimum of two consecutive lower highs, that is drawn diagonally on the chart. In a bearish trend, we are going to only open trades following the main direction. This means that we are only going to look at selling the asset, at every new lower high formed. As we can see in the chart, price is pushing to the downside, and retracing to resistance after every push. Price always moves in waves, and this will help us to enter in the market with a good risk-reward ratio. During a bearish trend it is always important to open positions following the downside momentum, because they will give the best risk-reward opportunity. Opening long positions during a downtrend, will usually give a risk reward of 1 to 1, and provide much more risk. Price keeps pushing to the downside, until it reaches the bottom at an important support level, and retraces back to the resistance. Price then pushes back down and creates a double bottom chart pattern, that indicates bullish pressure in the asset. Price pushes up and breaks the trend line and the current resistance level. Once price has broken the level, it retraces down retesting the new support. After having a clear bullish price action confirmation, we can enter the long trade. The target for the trade will be the next major resistance level, before having a potential retracement for a new long opportunity. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look in more detail, at the head and shoulders chart pattern. So just to quickly summarize, this is a bearish pattern found at the end of a bullish trend, during a period of price action consolidation. Price proceeds to the upside until it's rejected by a first resistance level, also known as the left shoulder. Then price pushes back to the downside, and is rejected at a support level, that will become the neckline of the chart pattern. Price then pushes back to the upside, higher than the left shoulder, creating the head of the chart pattern. Price then pushes back down to the neckline. Once again price is rejected from the neckline, and retraces to a lower resistance level creating the right shoulder. Price then pushes downwards and breaks the neckline. Once the neckline is broken, price retraces touching the previous support level, that now has become resistance. To calculate the target for the trades, we simply need to double the distance between the head and the neckline. Let's see in more detail, the dynamics of the head and shoulders chart pattern. The head and shoulders pattern, is simply a range of price consolidation, formed with a resistance and a support level. The pattern is similar to a triple top, but it has a middle fake out, or liquidity trap, called the head of the pattern. The fake out can also indicate a divergence between the price and an oscillator, such as the stochastic or the relative strength index. Price shows a higher high, but the oscillator shows a lower high, this means that a reversal is soon going to happen. Price is simply gathering more liquidity, before pushing to the downside. By looking at the chart, we can also see that a trend line can be drawn to support the bullish trend. Once price proceeds to the downside, it will eventually break the bullish trend line, and this will give us a good signal for a potential trend reversal. 
price then retests the resistance and the trend line, giving a first potential short opportunity, and then pushes down breaking the support level. Once price breaks the support, it will then retest the zone, giving a second potential short opportunity. Price action confirmation is vital before entering any short trade. Price then starts its downtrend moving towards lower support levels. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look in more detail, at the inverse head and shoulders chart pattern. So just to quickly summarize, this is a bullish pattern found at the end of a bearish trend, during a period of price action consolidation. Price proceeds to the downside until it's rejected by a first support level, also known as the left shoulder. Then price pushes back to the upside, and is rejected at a resistance level, that will become the neckline of the chart pattern. Price then pushes back to the downside, lower than the left shoulder, creating the head of the chart pattern. Price then pushes back up to the neckline. Once again price is rejected from the neckline, and retraces to a higher support level creating the right shoulder. Price then pushes upwards and breaks the neckline. Once the neckline is broken, price retraces touching the previous resistance level, that now has become support. To calculate the target for the trades, we simply need to double the distance between the head and the neckline. Let's see in more detail, the dynamics of the inverse head and shoulders chart pattern. The inverse head and shoulders pattern, is simply a range of price consolidation, formed with a resistance and a support level. The pattern is similar to a triple top, but it has a middle fake out, or liquidity trap, called the head of the pattern. The fake out can also indicate a divergence between the price and an oscillator, such as the stochastic or the relative strength index. Price shows a lower low, but the oscillator shows a higher low, this means that a reversal is soon going to happen. Price is simply gathering more liquidity, before pushing to the upside. By looking at the chart, we can also see that a trend line can be drawn to support the bearish trend. Once price proceeds to the upside, it will eventually break the bearish trend line, and this will give us a good signal for a potential trend reversal. Price then retests the support and the trend line, giving a first potential long opportunity, and then pushes up breaking the resistance level. Once price breaks the resistance, it will then retest the zone, giving a second potential long opportunity. Price action confirmation is vital before entering any long trade. Price then starts its uptrend moving towards higher resistance levels. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at the triple top chart pattern. This is a bearish chart pattern found at the end of a bullish trend, during a period of price action consolidation. Price proceeds to the upside until it's rejected by a first resistance level, creating the first top of the pattern. Then price pushes back to the downside, and is rejected at the support level, creating a range of consolidation. Price then pushes back to the upside at the resistance level, creating the second top. The second top gives us a first good confirmation of a strong key level and bearish momentum. When we have a clear price action confirmation we can enter a first trade. Price then pushes to the downside at the support level, but it still doesn't break the zone. Price pushes back up and creates the third top. The third top represents another good opportunity to open a second short trade. Price then pushes to the downside and breaks the support level. Once the support is broken, price retraces touching the previous level, that now has become resistance. When bearish price action confirmation is clear, we can enter a third trade. To calculate the target for the trades, we simply need to double the distance between the support and the resistance levels. traders, in this video we are going to look at the triple bottom chart pattern. This is a bullish chart pattern found at the end of a bearish trend, during a period of price action consolidation. Price proceeds to the downside until it's rejected by a first support level, creating the first bottom of the pattern. Then price pushes back to the upside, and is rejected at the resistance level, creating a range of consolidation. Price then pushes back to the downside at the support level, creating the second bottom. The second bottom gives us a first good confirmation of a strong key level and bullish momentum. When we have a clear price action confirmation we can enter a first trade. Price then pushes to the upside at the resistance level, but it still doesn't break the zone. Price pushes back down and creates the third bottom. The third bottom represents another good opportunity to open a second long trade. Price then pushes to the upside and breaks the resistance level. Once the resistance is broken, price retraces touching the previous level, that now has become support. When bullish price action confirmation is clear, we can enter a third trade. To calculate the target for the trades, we simply need to double the distance between the support and the resistance levels. 
Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at the bullish channel. The bullish channel is simply a trending market range, that is found diagonally on the chart. A trending market range is created diagonally, and price is trapped between a diagonal resistance and diagonal support levels. A bullish channel represents a bullish trend, with higher highs and higher lows that maintain a consistent and similar distance between each other, so that two lines can be plotted on the chart, one above and one below. In a bullish channel traders can open positions by buying at support, and selling at resistance. Positions should always primarily follow the main trend, but in cases in which a channel is formed, giving a good risk-reward ratio and price action confirmation, it is also possible to open positions in the opposite direction. To enter a trade, in both directions, it is always best to add other important confluences, such as oversold and overbought indicators, key price levels, financial data awareness, Fibonacci levels, and strong price action confirmation. Hello traders, in this video we are going to look at the bearish channel. The bearish channel is simply a trending market range, that is found diagonally on the chart. A trending market range is created diagonally, and price is trapped between a diagonal resistance and diagonal support levels. A bearish channel represents a bearish trend, with lower highs and lower lows that maintain a consistent and similar distance between each other, so that two lines can be plotted on the chart, one above and one below. In a bearish channel traders can open positions by buying at support, and selling at resistance. Positions should always primarily follow the main trend, but in cases in which a channel is formed, giving a good risk-reward ratio and price action confirmation, it is also possible to open positions in the opposite direction. To enter a trade, in both directions, it is always best to add other important confluences, such as oversold and overbought indicators, key price levels, financial data awareness, Fibonacci levels, and strong price action confirmation. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the bullish ascending triangle. The ascending triangle is a bullish chart pattern, that is found during a continuation of an uptrend, and it is made up of a horizontal resistance line, and a diagonal support line. The ascending triangle is a consolidation pattern where the highs remain the same, whilst the lows consistently move higher, until they become very close to the highs, and eventually break the resistance level for a trend continuation. By looking at the chart, we can see that price is moving upwards, until it reaches its first rejection at the resistance level. Price then heads to the downside creating a higher low. Once again, price moves to the upside, and finds rejection at the same resistance level as before. Price then retraces to the downside, and creates another higher low. Price pushes back to the upside, but still can't break the resistance level. Price then moves downwards, creates another higher low, and then pushes to the upside managing to break the resistance level. Once price has broken the zone, and confirmed it with a strong bullish price action, we can enter our long trade following the main trend. To calculate the target of the trade, we simply need to calculate the initial bullish push before the pattern, and double it after the breakout. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the bearish descending triangle. The descending triangle is a bearish chart pattern, that is found during a continuation of a downtrend, and it is made up of a horizontal support line, and a diagonal resistance line. The descending triangle is a consolidation pattern where the lows remain the same, whilst the highs consistently move lower, until they become very close to the lows, and eventually break the support level for a trend continuation. By looking at the chart, we can see that price is moving downwards, until it reaches its first rejection at the support level. Price then heads to the upside creating a lower high. Once again, price moves to the downside, and finds rejection at the same support level as before. Price then retraces to the upside, and creates another lower high. Price pushes back to the downside, but still can't break the support level. Price then moves upwards, creates another lower high, and then pushes to the downside managing to break the support level. Once price has broken the zone, and confirmed it with a strong bearish price action, we can enter our short trade following the main trend. To calculate the target of the trade, we simply need to calculate the initial bearish push before the pattern, and double it after the breakout. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the symmetrical triangle. The symmetrical triangle is a consolidation chart pattern, where both the highs and the lows get nearer to each other. There is no straight line in the pattern, like in the ascending or descending triangle, but instead there are two diagonal lines, that represent the resistance and the support level. A symmetrical triangle, can either be a continuation or reversal chart pattern. 
when the symmetrical triangle is found during a strong bearish trend, then price will be likely to break the pattern and continue its downward trend. When the symmetrical triangle is found during a strong bullish trend, then price will be likely to break the patterns and continue its upward trend. When the symmetrical triangle is found after a range of consolidation, it can break out in both directions. It is vital to wait for price action confirmation, after the breakout of the pattern, and before entering a trade. Let's see a bearish example of the symmetrical triangle pattern. By looking at the chart, we can see that price is moving in a triangle, forming lower highs and higher lows. Price pushes down creating a higher low, then pushes up again creating a lower high. Price manages to break the support level with strong bearish pressure. Price retraces and confirms the breakout, with good price action confirmation. We can then open the short trade after the confirmation. To calculate the target of the trade, we simply need to calculate the initial bearish push before the start of the pattern, and double it after the breakout. Let's see a bullish example of the symmetrical triangle pattern. By looking at the chart, we can see that price is moving in a triangle, forming lower highs and higher lows. Price pushes up creating a lower high, then pushes down again creating a higher low. Price squeezes between the support and the resistance levels, and manages to break the resistance level with strong bullish pressure. Price retraces and confirms the breakout, with good price action confirmation. We can then open the long trade after the confirmation. To calculate the target of the trade, we simply need to calculate the initial bullish push before the start of the pattern, and double it after the breakout. Hello traders, in this video we are going to learn how to trade bullish trend flag patterns. Bullish flag patterns are bullish continuation trend patterns. As we can see on the chart, price is moving in an uptrend, creating higher highs and higher lows. Price moves in waves, and will eventually reach minor resistance zones creating bearish retracements. The retracement is not linear, but instead, price creates a diagonal counter consolidation range. Price fluctuates in a counter diagonal support and resistance level, creating what is known as a flag continuation pattern. Once price breaks the flag to the upside, this is a signal to buy the asset for a continuation of the trend. Flags are found during strong trends, so in these cases it is not suggested to open short-term bearish trades. It is only suggested to trade with the trend, once price has fully broken out the flag pattern. Always wait for price closure before entering a trade, never anticipate the formation of a candlestick, because it may close differently within the last minutes. To calculate the target of the trade, you simply need to calculate the distance of the bullish push, before the formation of the flag, and double it after the breakout of the flag pattern. Hello traders, in this video we are going to learn how to trade bearish trend flag patterns. Bearish flag patterns are bearish continuation trend patterns. As we can see on the chart, price is moving in a downtrend, creating lower highs and lower lows. Price moves in waves, and will eventually reach minor support zones creating bullish retracements. The retracement is not linear, but instead, price creates a diagonal counter consolidation range. Price fluctuates in a counter diagonal support and resistance level, creating what is known as a flag continuation pattern. Once price breaks the flag to the downside, this is a signal to sell the asset for a continuation of the trend. Flags are found during strong trends, so in these cases it is not suggested to open short-term bullish trades. It is only suggested to trade with the trend, once price has fully broken out the flag pattern. Always wait for price closure before entering a trade, never anticipate the formation of a candlestick, because it may close differently within the last minutes. To calculate the target of the trade, you simply need to calculate the distance of the bearish push, before the formation of the flag, and double it after the breakout of the flag pattern. Hello traders, today we are going to look at the ascending wedge found during a bullish trend. The ascending wedge found in a bullish trend, represents a potential trend reversal to the downside. As we may see on the chart, price is moving in an uptrend, and eventually it starts to trend within a wedge, with price movements becoming smaller and smaller. Within the wedge, price continues to create higher highs and higher lows, even if the pattern is becoming smaller and smaller towards the end. Price squeezes in the last part of the wedge, until it eventually breaks out to the downside. When price breaks the pattern, we can enter a bearish trade for a trend reversal. The target for the trade will be a major support level, linked with a strong key level. Hello traders, today we are going to look at the descending wedge found during a bullish trend. The descending wedge found in a bullish trend, represents a potential trend continuation to the upside. 
as we may see on the chart, price is moving in an uptrend, and eventually it starts to trend within a wedge, with price movements becoming smaller and smaller. Within the wedge, price creates lower highs and lower lows, even though the pattern is becoming smaller and smaller towards the end. Price squeezes in the last part of the wedge, until it eventually breaks out to the upside. When price breaks the pattern, we can enter a bullish trade for a trend continuation. The target for the trade will be a major resistance level, linked with a strong price key level. Hello traders, today we are going to look at the ascending wedge found during a bearish trend. The ascending wedge, found in a bearish trend, represents a potential trend continuation to the downside. As we may see on the chart, price is moving in a downtrend, and eventually it starts to trend within a wedge, with price movements becoming smaller and smaller. Within the wedge, price creates higher highs and higher lows, even though the pattern is becoming smaller and smaller towards the end. Price squeezes in the last part of the wedge, until it eventually breaks out to the downside. When price breaks the pattern, we can enter a bearish trade for a trend continuation. The target for the trade will be a major support level, linked with a strong price key level. Hello traders, today we are going to look at the descending wedge found during a bearish trend. The descending wedge, found in a bearish trend, represents a potential trend reversal to the upside. As we may see on the chart, price is moving in a downtrend, and eventually it starts to trend within a wedge, with price movements becoming smaller and smaller. Within the wedge, price creates lower highs and lower lows, even though the pattern is becoming smaller and smaller towards the end. Price squeezes in the last part of the wedge, until it eventually breaks out to the upside. When price breaks the pattern, we can enter a bullish trade for a trend reversal. The target for the trade will be a major resistance level, linked with a strong price key level. Hello traders, in this video we are going to learn how to trade pennants in a bullish trend. Bullish pennants are bullish continuation chart patterns. As we can see on the chart, price is moving in an uptrend, creating higher highs and higher lows. Price moves to the upside, and will then reach minor resistance zones, that will reject price and start short retracements. The pennant is very similar to a flag pattern, but instead of being a diagonal rectangle, it is formed like a symmetrical triangle. The retracement is not linear, but instead, price is trapped between the symmetrical triangle, with lower highs and higher lows, that squeeze together until price breaks out. The pennant is very similar to a symmetrical triangle, the main differences between the two, is that a pennant is much smaller in volume, and it always represents a continuation of the main trend. Once price breaks the pennant to the upside, this is a signal to buy the asset for a continuation of the trend. Pennants are found during strong trends, so in these cases it is not suggested to open short-term bearish trades. It is only suggested to trade with the trend, once price has fully broken out the pennant pattern. Always wait for price closure before entering a trade, never anticipate the formation of a candlestick, because it may close differently within the last minutes. To calculate the target of the trade, you simply need to calculate the distance of the bullish push, before the formation of the pennant, and double it after the breakout of the pennant pattern. Hello traders, in this video we are going to learn how to trade pennants in a bearish trend. Bearish pennants are bearish continuation chart patterns. As we can see on the chart, price is moving in a downtrend, creating lower highs and lower lows. Price moves to the downside, and will then reach minor support zones, that will reject price and start short retracements. The pennant is very similar to a flag pattern, but instead of being a diagonal rectangle, it is formed like a symmetrical triangle. The retracement is not linear, but instead, price is trapped between the symmetrical triangle, with lower highs and higher lows, that squeeze together until price breaks out. The pennant is very similar to a symmetrical triangle, the main differences between the two, is that a pennant is much smaller in volume, and it always represents a continuation of the main trend. Once price breaks the pennant to the downside, this is a signal to sell the asset for a continuation of the trend. Pennants are found during strong trends, so in these cases it is not suggested to open short-term bullish trades. It is only suggested to trade with the trend, once price has fully broken out the pennant pattern. Always wait for price closure before entering a trade, never anticipate the formation of a candlestick, because it may close differently within the last minutes. To calculate the target of the trade, you simply need to calculate the distance of the bearish push, before the formation of the pennant, and double it after the breakout of the pennant pattern. Hello traders, in this video we are going to learn how to trade rectangles in a bullish trend. Bullish rectangles are bullish continuation chart patterns. 
As we can see on the chart, price is moving in an uptrend, creating higher highs and higher lows. Price moves in waves, and will eventually reach minor resistance zones creating smaller bearish retracements. The rectangle pattern is horizontal, and price fluctuates in a small consolidation range. Price is trapped between a support and resistance level, creating what is known as a rectangle continuation pattern. Once price breaks the rectangle to the upside, this is a signal to buy the asset for a continuation of the trend. Rectangles are found during strong trends, so in these cases it is not suggested to open short-term bearish trades. It is only suggested to trade with the trend, once price has fully broken out the rectangle pattern. Always wait for price closure before entering a trade, never anticipate the formation of a candlestick, because it may close differently within the last minutes. To calculate the target of the trade, you simply need to calculate the distance of the bullish push, before the formation of the rectangle, and double it after the breakout of the rectangle pattern. Hello traders, in this video we are going to learn how to trade rectangles in a bearish trend. Bearish rectangles are bearish continuation chart patterns. As we can see on the chart, price is moving in a downtrend, creating lower highs and lower lows. Price moves in waves, and will eventually reach minor support zones creating smaller bullish retracements. The rectangle pattern is horizontal, and price fluctuates in a small consolidation range. Price is trapped between a support and resistance level, creating what is known as a rectangle continuation pattern. Once price breaks the rectangle to the downside, this is a signal to sell the asset for a continuation of the trend. Rectangles are found during strong trends, so in these cases it is not suggested to open short-term bullish trades. It is only suggested to trade with the trend, once price has fully broken out the rectangle pattern. Always wait for price closure before entering a trade, never anticipate the formation of a candlestick, because it may close differently within the last minutes. To calculate the target of the trade, you simply need to calculate the distance of the bearish push, before the formation of the rectangle, and double it after the breakout of the rectangle pattern. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the cup and handle chart pattern. The cup and handle chart pattern is a continuation pattern, that gathers liquidity before pushing again with the main trend. As we may see on the chart, price is moving upwards in a bullish trend. It will then reach a major resistance level that will form the neckline of the pattern. Price then will start moving to the downside in waves, creating lower highs and lower lows. Price will then reach a major support zone, and start a reversal creating higher highs and higher lows. These waves of consolidation will form a semicircle, also known as the cup of the pattern. Price then pushes to the upside reaching the neckline, but the momentum is still not strong enough to break the level. Price retraces one last time, creating a smaller semicircle, known as the handle, before eventually breaking the pattern. Price pushes again to the upside, breaks the neckline, and then retests the new support level before continuing with its main trend. We can enter a first trade after the bullish confirmation in the handle, and a second trade after the bullish retest of the new support level. To calculate the target of the trade, we need to measure the previous push, before the formation of the pattern, and double it after price has broken the neckline. Hello traders, in this video we are going to analyze the inverse cup and handle chart pattern. The inverse cup and handle chart pattern is a continuation pattern, that gathers liquidity before pushing again with the main trend. As we may see on the chart, price is moving downwards in a bearish trend. It will then reach a major support level, that will form the neckline of the pattern. Price then will start moving to the upside in waves, creating higher highs and higher lows. Price will then reach a major resistance zone, and start a reversal creating lower highs and lower lows. These waves of consolidation will form a semicircle, also known as the cup of the pattern. Price then pushes to the downside reaching the neckline, but the momentum is still not strong enough to break the level. Price retraces one last time, creating a smaller semicircle, known as the handle, before eventually breaking the pattern. Price pushes again to the downside, breaks the neckline, and then retests the new resistance level before continuing with its main trend. We can enter a first trade after the bearish confirmation in the handle, and a second trade after the bearish retest of the new resistance level. To calculate the target of the trade, we need to measure the previous bearish push, before the formation of the pattern, and double it after price has broken the neckline. Indicators are mathematical constructions, that use and process past price data which is detected in specific assets, with the aim of predicting the future trend of the price movement. Indicators are numerous and complete the framework of technical analysis. Indicators are mainly used to analyze the volatility, the volume, the momentum and the trend of a specific asset. 
you should never enter a trade based solely on an indicator. Indicators have to be used as a final confluence of technical and fundamental analysis. There are two types of indicators. The leading indicators and the lagging indicators. Leading indicators are used to predict future price trends, through the statistical study of previous prices. Lagging indicators, on the other hand, are used to predict the future trend of prices, through the signals given by the current market trend and price action. Some of the most known examples of leading indicators are the Relative Strength Index and the Stochastic Oscillator. Some of the most known examples of lagging indicators are the Moving Averages, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence, and the Parabolic SAR. The Stochastic Oscillator is one of the most useful indicators when trading. The Stochastic allows you to evaluate price fluctuations and provides indications on the strength of the trend, as well as the momentum of the price, indicating entry and exit signals. The momentum is the rate of acceleration of an asset's price. The stochastic is called oscillator, because it oscillates between the levels of 0 and 100. No matter how much the price on the chart moves up or down, it will always fluctuate between the levels of 0 and 100. This indicator examines how close the candle closures are to the resistance or support, recorded over a specific period of time. The fundamental use of the stochastic is to identify areas of excess and to understand when the price is oversold or overbought. The overbought zone is identified when the stochastic fluctuates above the 80 level. Overbought zones give us signals to sell. The oversold zone is identified when the stochastic fluctuates below the 20 level. Oversold zones give us signals to buy. When the oscillator indicates oversold and overbought areas, you shouldn't buy or sell immediately, you always need confirmation from price action. The stochastic, when indicating the level 80 or level 20, is telling us that the trend right now is strong, and we need to be patient and have a slowdown of momentum before price can reverse. If you see a rocket going up into the sky, it will have to slow down before it starts its downside momentum, and the same applies for the price. Momentum always changes direction before price. The default stochastic period is 14 periods. This means that using the one day time frame, 14 periods are equivalent to 14 candles of a day, therefore 14 days. On the other hand, using the one hour time frame, 14 periods are equivalent to 14 candles of one hour, therefore 14 hours. The stochastic oscillator is formed by two lines. The red line is called the percentage K, also known as the fast line, and is more sensitive to price changes. The blue line is called percentage D, also known as the slow line, and is the one that allows you to generate buy or sell signals. Once the indicator arrives in the overbought or oversold area, you have to wait for the red line to cross the blue line in the direction of the new trend, giving us further confirmation. This intersection must be combined with price action analysis, having candlestick closures that confirm the new direction. Another very effective method to use the stochastic is by analyzing the divergence between the price and the oscillator. A divergence is simply a price movement that is not confirmed by the stochastic, indicating a potential reversal. A bullish divergence occurs when the price shows a lower low, but the stochastic showing a higher low. A bearish divergence occurs when the price shows a higher high, but the stochastic shows a lower high. These divergence signals indicate the end of a trend, and a potential trend reversal. Divergence analysis helps to avoid liquidity traps, and above all helps to understand the best time to enter the market. Technical analysis uses the relative strength index as a momentum indicator. To assess whether a security's price is overvalued or undervalued, the RSI evaluates the speed and amplitude of recent price fluctuations. The RSI is represented as an oscillator that ranges from 0 to 100. The RSI is frequently placed beneath the price graph of an asset, to give technical traders clues regarding bullish and bearish price momentum. When the RSI is over 70, an asset is typically seen as being overbought, and it gives a potential signal to sell. When the RSI is below 30, an asset is typically seen as oversold, and it gives a potential signal to buy. The RSI can remain in the overbought or oversold range for a long time, especially when the stock is in a strong trend, as shown in the chart above. To effectively use the RSI, it is crucial to understand the security's main trend. The RSI oversold level is most likely higher than 30 during an uptrend, and lower than 70 in a downtrend. 
retracements in a trending market typically stop at the level 50, before continuing with the main direction. The following chart illustrates how the RSI peaks near 50, rather than 70 during a decline. In contrast to trading ranges, the relative strength indicator is less trustworthy in trending markets. In actuality, the majority of traders are aware that the RSI's signals, during significant upward or downward movements, frequently tend to be erroneous. The RSI can provide false alarms in trending markets, therefore traders may benefit from using bullish indications, primarily when the price is in a bullish trend, and bearish signals, primarily when a stock is in a bearish trend. When price shifts in the opposite direction of the RSI, this is known as an RSI divergence. In other words, a chart may show a change in momentum prior to an associated change in price. When the RSI shows an oversold level, followed by a higher low, but the price shows lower lows, this is known as a bullish divergence. When the RSI shows an overbought level, followed by a lower high, but the price shows higher highs, this is known as a bearish divergence. RSI signals, like those of any other technical indicator, are more reliable when they follow the long-term trend, and are backed up by other major confluences. Fundamental analysis represents the study of financial news, through the release of data on macroeconomic events, statistical reports, social factors, economic indicators, and political statements. In fundamental analysis, economic and financial data are analyzed, to see what effect they can have on interest rates. Interest rates are one of the main factors, that cause the movement of exchange rates for a given asset. Fundamental analysis consists in analyzing the actual result with the forecast, to understand future price direction. Economic data is released every week and can greatly affect the market, making it volatile and risky at the same time. It is important to always stay up to date on fundamental news, even if your strategy is mainly based on technical analysis. Having a balanced understanding of fundamental and technical factors will help you make the best decisions for your investments and will help you understand the potential price targets, taking advantage of opportunities that arise. Traders who rely solely on fundamental analysis are called fundamental traders. These traders have long-term structured targets and use a strategy known as position trading. They open positions based solely on fundamental analysis and keep them open for months or even years. Some data affects exchange rates immediately while other data might have a slower impact, adjusting the direction over the long term. In some situations it may be better to avoid entering the market, especially when you have a high-impact set of news, that will be released at the same time. Negative news have a greater impact than positive news, this is an advanced aspect due to the modern behavior of financial markets. Before the release of a financial news, there is a phase of stagnation, or a phase of low volatility, followed by a phase of greater volatility after the release of the economic data. The economic calendar is a kind of agenda that allows you to view past and future economic news, as well as their date and time of publication. The economic calendar lists all the important events that have occurred or that will happen in a short period of time. We must learn to interpret and study the economic calendar, as at certain times the market will present strong volatility peaks, and we must understand when to open a position, and when it's better to avoid entering a trade. The stock market is unpredictable unlike the forex market, because it doesn't have an economic calendar. In the forex market there are programmed news, that allow us to know when the market could be behaving abnormally, and therefore help us prepare ourselves accordingly. To keep track of the economic calendar we recommend using forex factory or investing. On forex factory you will find three different flags, that will be placed by the side of the currency. The three flag colors are yellow, orange and red. Yellow flags have little impact on the market, and usually create movements of 10 to 15 pips. Orange flags have a medium impact on the market, and usually create movements of 20 to 30 pips. Red flags have a strong market impact, and usually create movements of 50 pips or more. The impact also depends on the type of news that is released. As you may see on the screen, on the left you have the date and the exact time of the news release, as well as the currency and its impact. By clicking on details, you will have more information about the specific news. On the right hand side you can find the previous data, and the forecast of the current news. What really matters when analyzing fundamental data, is to see if the actual result is bigger or smaller than the forecast. If the actual result is bigger than the forecast, then it will be represented in green, meaning that it is good for the currency. If the actual result is smaller than the forecast, then it will be represented in red, meaning that it is bad for the currency. If the actual result is the same as the forecast, then it will be represented in black, 
meaning that the result is neutral for the currency. Investing is very similar to Forex Factory. Instead of having the three colored flags, it shows one star that is equivalent to the yellow flag, two stars that is equivalent to the orange flag, and three stars that is equivalent to the red flag, for high-impact news releases. Investing is great for international traders because it offers data in so many languages. Forex Factory only provides data through English language. Forex Factory is more simplistic while investing is more detailed. Opening a trade as soon as a high-impact news is released is too risky, because spreads increase significantly, and banks can manipulate the market. It is always better to wait 30 to 60 minutes before opening a position. When using these websites to monitor the economic calendar, we suggest to avoid reading all types of forums, because they will only confuse you. Use these websites only to monitor data, and only rely on yourself and your analysis when entering a trade. People that spend their time commenting on these websites, are certainly not successful traders to follow. The non-farm payroll is also known as the NFP report, and it is a key indicator for the U.S. economy. Non-farm payroll releases a simple data, has the United States increased or decreased its total number of jobs? This data represents the total number of paid U.S. workers of any business, excluding farm employees, private household employees, government employees, and employees of nonprofit organizations. The NFP report is used to assist government policymakers to determine the current state of the economy and predict future levels of economic activity. The number of jobs added or lost over a certain period of time is a strong guide to future interest rate movements. The non-farm payroll is released the first Friday of the month. The released report provides the data of the net change of U.S. jobs for the previous month. So if the report is released on the first Friday of October, this means that the data is referred to the month of September. NFP is the most observed fundamental news regarding high volatility impact, together with central bank events or decisions involving interest rates. Straight after the data has been released, there will be sudden spikes in price across all dollar pairs. The NFP report is so important, because the United States have the largest economy in the world, so the health of the US dollar affects the health of other currencies in the world. If wage earners are growing less than expected, it is certainly not good for the US economy. Instead, if wage earners are growing more than expected, it is certainly good for the US economy. It is important to monitor the markets closely when the data is being released, and more importantly, it is vital to avoid trading during the hours in which the data is going public. Increasing your risk of being caught out with slippage is never worth chasing for an additional few pips that you can easily make on any other trading day. Instant gratification is a downfall when it comes to trading. Stick to simplicity, stick to your strategy and try your best to avoid highly volatile trading days such as NFP Fridays. Just after the release of the NFP, spreads increase significantly because brokers know that there are many people interested in trading for the release of this data. Many analysts, traders, funds, and speculators try to anticipate the NFP number and the future price direction. With so many different parties watering this report and interpreting it even when the number comes in line with estimates, NFP data will tend to cause a major disruption to the markets temporarily. Unexpected volatility in the markets can often invalidate any logical technical chart pattern or setup. It is suggested to stay away from non-farm payroll and start trading the following week, once there is a stronger sense of direction. The gross domestic product is an economic indicator, which indicates the total value of goods and services produced in a country, and analyzes the health and economic growth of a particular country. In 1934, the modern version of the GDP was introduced by Simon Kuznets, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics. In 1944, at the Bretton Woods Conference, the GDP became the main method of measuring the economy of a particular country. The GDP reports have a strong influence on the market sentiment, and often shake the market with high volatility. This volatility can last for hours, especially when results deviate significantly from the analyst forecasts. The speed of volatility created after the release of the GDP can create many high-risk and high-reward trading opportunities. GDP is considered an important part of fundamental analysis, and in the economic calendars it is marked as a high-impact event. Professional traders carefully analyze the GDP release to decide whether to open a new position or whether to support the active ones. The GDP is based on four key elements. The consumption of private and public goods. 
private and public investments, government expenses, and foreign trade. The general formula, to calculate the gross domestic product is equivalent to the total consumption of personal goods, plus the total investments, plus the total government expenditures, plus the total exports, minus the total imports. The GDP figure may not always be reflected by the market. Often GDP data is already partially integrated into the market, meaning the market may not react as expected once the data is released. GDP is a lagging indicator, which means that it is only calculated at the end of the concentration period. Therefore, it does not take into account real-time economic change. However, this all depends on the expectations of the analysts. If the figure turns out to be worse than expected, it means that the economy is shrinking, and a recession could begin. The currency of the economy will have a bearish movement. If the figure is better than expected, it means that the economy is expanding and investors are gaining confidence. The currency of the economy will have a bullish movement. If the data is the same, or differs slightly from the expectation, bilateral movements may occur, without excessive volatility. If the periodic change in GDP is negative, for two consecutive periods, the alarm bell could start to sound, as it would be considered a signal of economic recession. GDP is calculated periodically, on a quarterly or annual basis, to measure how the economic value of local production activities change over time. GDP for the dollar, pound, and Canadian dollar has a monthly, quarterly, and annual release date. GDP for the euro, the yen, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar has a quarterly and annual release date. The first objective in trading is to protect your capital, while the second is to gradually increase it, using a strategy based on compound interest. As in a football match, you have to know when and how to attack, and when and how to defend. Knowing how to attack allows you to progress and increase your capital, while knowing how to defend allows you to protect your results. They both have the same level of importance. Risk management is primarily based on defense. According to statistics 90% of people lose money in trading because risk is not managed correctly. Many people treat trading like gambling, and risk all of their capital in the hope of quickly doubling it. Initially it is advisable to risk between 0.5 and 1% per trade, and then increase, after a minimum of 6 consistent months of profit, to a maximum risk of 2%. Professional traders risk no more than 2% of their capital per trade, and properly manage the size and leverage of their positions. All traders face negative streaks, and it is in these situations where risk management becomes fundamental to implement. If you risk 10% for each trade, it means that with 10 trades you will lose all of your capital. Instead, if you risk 1% per trade, after 10 negative trades, you will still have 90% of the capital available. The stop loss is a vital tool that must be set for each trade. Unexpected economic and political news can move the market against your own analysis, and in many cases your mind will not be ready to accept the closure of the trade. The mind will wait and hope for a reversal, which in 95% of cases will not happen, and the loss will increase accordingly. In a risk management strategy, it is important to protect positions in profit by moving the stop loss to the entry price, or in some cases, even moving the stop loss into profit. A good risk management strategy is based on calculating the probability of your system, calculating the risk-reward ratio, and being disciplined to follow a fixed percentage of risk for each trade. The first important step in becoming an independent trader, is to have a broad knowledge of the mechanisms that move the forex market, and to create a system that best reflects your goals and personality. The second phase that will allow you to learn even more, will be thanks to the experience that you will acquire by learning from your mistakes. Mistakes can be technical, but initially they will mainly be related to incorrect risk management, opening positions that are too large for your capital, and treating trading as gambling. This is because many traders start with a minimum capital, and try to gamble in the hope of making it grow fast. The first advice is to train and test your strategy on a demo account, for a minimum of one month up to a maximum of three months, and be able to be consistently profitable, maintaining proper risk management, even if it is virtual money. Once you manage to be profitable with a certain strategy, you can switch to a real account by opening positions with micro lots. Starting to invest with a real account will make various emotions emerge, that must be controlled and managed, such as fear, greed, hope and anger. 90% of success lies in psychological balance and discipline. A written strategy for risk management, is essential to remove negative emotions and temptations, which can be detrimental for new traders. Success in trading means being profitable over a long period of time. The true measure of a trader's success lies in repeatability. Three fundamental concepts to always keep in mind are 
always have a higher reward than risk on each trade. Never lose more than the percentage set for your trade. Use a compound interest strategy to gradually grow your capital. The success of a trader lies in the ability to identify a valid entry and exit strategy. We must always be clear about the percentage that we will risk, and at the same time we must have discipline in respecting it. Emotions are not allowed in this business. Follow your strategy, and always be realistic about your expectations. Trading is a real entrepreneurial activity, where your trading capital becomes your company. Discipline is one of the most important factors, that will help you become a successful trader. When you start off your trading journey, it is not easy to trade with a small capital, and you certainly need a lot of discipline in order to do so. By trading with a small capital, you are basically obligated to focus exclusively on your performance, and not on money. If you focus solely on money, you will end up blowing your account. Beginners should all have a small account, and practice as much as they can, in order to gain a lot of experience. Beginners should focus on learning and practicing. They should not be obsessed with money. Traders need to work on gaining as much experience and confidence as possible, because it is very important for their trading success. To learn and gain experience, you will need to make lots of mistakes, it is completely normal, and you want to do that with less money as possible. If you want to become a successful trader, you need to focus on learning. Money will come automatically when you develop your edge. So many traders never give themselves the proper chance of success, because they are so obsessed about making money immediately. There is so much time to make money in the financial markets. You need to be patient. When you have a good rational trading system, you don't need to be in a hurry, you need to be confident to execute the trade, when the opportunity is presented. It costs zero dollars to wait for the right opportunity, but it will cost a lot of money to enter a trade based upon your current emotional state. Most psychological issues come from a lack of correct position sizing, and the need to always be active in the market. Once you understand that you need to be disciplined in your position sizing, and compound your capital month after month, as well as understanding that not every day is trading day, you will start seeing enormous positive results. These two factors are essential to become a professional trader. You must be disciplined to execute trades, that follow your system strictly. If you become too emotionally attached to a specific trade, it means that you need to reduce your position sizing and trading capital, to the point that there are no emotions involved. You need to find a balance between unemotional attachment, and enough money to still feel motivated. Take advantage of opportunities using a well-written rational trading plan, and be disciplined to understand when to add positions, when to lock in profits, and when to cut losses. In trading, whoever has a strict system, fixed patterns and standards to observe, will eventually succeed in the market. After each trade, you must always be able to answer the question. Why did I open the trade? How did I manage the trade? How did I exit from the trade? You must always be honest with yourself when answering these questions. If you fail to lock in profits, it is because you were doing something wrong, and not because you were unlucky. It is very important to always stay open-minded, while adapting to market movements, and never get attached to a single trade. The market always changes, and you must never get overconfident, and think that you are smarter than the market. Trading is not gambling. We are not playing. We are investing our hard-earned money with probabilities, statistics and macroeconomic analysis. Having a consistent trading journal is an aspect that should not be overlooked, especially after losses. The best lessons are learned after losses. After winning trades, we need to analyze how the trade was managed, if it was closed too soon, if the risk management was correct, and how we behaved emotionally. After losing trades, you need to analyze why the price did not respect your analysis, analyze if you entered the market too early if the risk management was correct, and if there were fundamental news that impacted the asset. You will learn much more from losses than from wins. Experience beats education, and in the long term it will give you the edge and intuition, to profit in certain situations. Always keep track of your trades, analyze your performance, your attitudes, your emotions, and understand what you need to improve. Creating a daily journal using a notebook or on your computer, is a great way to improve your trading performance. We also suggest you to take a before and after picture of your trades, to keep in mind market situations that should and should not be repeated. This process will drastically help you in your growth as a successful trader. Averaging down is when a trader buys an asset, but the price falls, and the trader decides to buy again despite being at a loss. This obviously also applies to traders who continue to sell, despite the fact that the price continues to rise. Averaging down, therefore, represents the action of opening further positions, 
despite the price going against the initial analysis, in the hope of recovering quickly and returning into profit. Averaging down is a type of strategy that works well for long-term investors, because the price of the assets has time to go back up, or down, based on the open trade. Professional traders who are based on the long term, and who apply this strategy, use a very low leverage, and positions are calculated very strictly, to manage efficiently their capital. This technique is also used by banks, having in fact a long-term approach, and above all having the power to change the direction of the price, thanks to their high liquidity. For all traders, who instead rely on the short term, averaging down represents a risk that will cost time and money. It will cost time because the time used in opening further positions on a negative trade, and with a hope of recovering, will not allow to analyze other currency pairs, to find potential new opportunities that could generate a higher return. It will cost money because by opening further positions on a negative trade, you will risk accumulating a greater loss, and consequently risking a high percentage of your capital, without even trying to diversify your portfolio. In certain situations, instead of opening further positions in the hope that losses can be recovered, it is better to close the initial trade, and wait for the right moment to re-enter the market. This video was included in the psychology section, because averaging down, for most traders, is caused by a lack of emotional control. Emotions such as anger, arrogance, and hope lead traders, especially beginners, to open multiple positions with incorrect risk management, trying to make the big deal by recovering their losses. Unfortunately, this will most of the time cause considerable losses, which can damage the available capital. The best time, to open further positions, is when the trade is in profit, and is following the analyzed direction. Price corrections are a great time to enter the market, and add more positions using a proper risk management. You can enter the market when you have a retest of support, or of resistance, combined with other confluences, such as key levels and Fibonacci levels. Trading, especially at the beginning, can be an experience that isolates you from other people. You need to invest a lot of time in order to improve, and in order to reach the peak of your abilities. Trading psychology is based on two main emotions, that dominate the movement of the markets. These two emotions are greed and fear. Greed and fear are two emotions that come into play, when you do not have a well-structured plan. The first step is to become aware of the fact that these emotions exist, and consequently work to minimize them, by making decisions that follow a logical and non-emotional strategy. Emotions don't have to overwhelm you. You must be in control of your emotions. Greed and fear can become the most dangerous enemies in this business, if you don't take control of them. Some methods used to reduce the impact of emotions when trading are, breathing exercises, meditation, yoga, and sports. These methods should be chosen based on your personality and pleasures, so that they can really benefit you. Another efficient method to reduce the impact of emotions, is to keep a trading journal about your trades, your attitude, and your emotions. Writing things down will help you to think logically, and analyze your performance to understand what has to be improved. Your strategy should also be written in the most rational way possible, and must be followed strictly to generate continuous positive results. Discipline, perseverance, knowledge, and experience are very important factors. Discipline means following your trading strategy to the letter for every position that will be opened. If the conditions are not met, your discipline will be not opening any position. Discipline will lead to satisfying results over time. Consistency is simply the skill of staying disciplined every day. Knowledge and experience are essential, in order to gain greater confidence when executing, managing, and exiting a trade. A risk management plan is essential to minimize emotions. By having a written strategy, and a well-thought-out risk plan, the involvement of your emotions has already been minimized. It is very important to understand the psychology behind the Forex market. The market is not something physical but it is simply the currency price, which moves according to the supply and demand of the investors. With that said, it becomes vital to open positions that only follow the direction of the current market trend. We as retail traders have no impact on the market, and we do not have to trade against it, but together with it. Central banks can see the positions of most investors, and be aware of the global sentiment. Banks in some situations, especially during financial news releases, could make your life difficult, by manipulating the price and trick you about the future direction of the market. We as retail traders must be aware of this, and avoid entering the market during dangerous situations, such as during the release of high-impact news. The trading platforms have also been built very carefully. The simple fact that when a trade is in profit it is represented with the color green, and brings us confidence and hope, while a trade in loss is represented with the color red, 
and brings us fear and anger, even if the price movements are only of a few pips. Once you enter the trade, you must have confidence in the analysis and in your skills. We must not be glued to the computer and monitor the outcome of the trade, it is enough only to analyze the next candle closures on the chart, to decide if the trade should be closed earlier than expected. Even the chart with colored candles can play with your emotions, in fact some traders, in order not to be fooled by the psychology of the colors of the candles, change the colors of them with blue, black or white. Don't listen to useless headlines and news, because most of the time, they will just make you take the wrong decisions. One of the simplest concepts in trading, but of vital importance to understand, is that you should always buy at a low price, and sell at a high price. This is associated with the foundations of technical analysis, when price is found at resistance levels and support levels, in hyperextended areas or after price corrections. Entering the market in these price zones, represents the best timing to exploit market opportunities. To be successful in trading, you must learn to remove all kinds of emotions. This business is completely based on an economic result, but losing money or making money must not affect you emotionally. Always remember that in order to attract the maximum amount of economic success, you must have respect for money but at the same time be indifferent towards it. Money is fundamental in our life, and it is essential to understand that trading is a form of investment, and therefore the risk must always be proportional to the money you have. Experience will make you improve drastically, and will take you to the next level. Always learn from your mistakes by using honesty and logic, not emotions. One of the most common mistakes is that everyone wants to become a millionaire within a week, without following proper risk management, and risking 50% of their capital in the hope of doubling it. This is undoubtedly the fastest way to lose all of your capital in the shortest possible time. Investing with real money is very different from investing with virtual money, and this is where your weaknesses will emerge, and it will be essential to analyze yourself and understand how to manage your emotions. By starting to invest with mini lots and micro lots, you will begin to gain experience without risking a large amount of money. Each month closed in profit, you can increase a micro lot at a time, in the same way as you increase the weights in the gym using progressive overload. In the same way your body will adapt to handle higher weights, the same goes for your mind, which will adapt to handle bigger positions. Profit will be your measure in order to decide whether to increase your positions or not. There is no need to be in a hurry or to be afraid of missing an opportunity. The market is continually filled with opportunities. When you have a well-constructed plan, you shouldn't be in a hurry. It costs zero dollars to wait for the right trade, but it will cost you a lot more, if you enter in the wrong trade for a lack of patience. Trading as a business is not identified as income, but as an investment. Great results can be achieved in the forex market, but it is not a guaranteed income for every month. The best advice is to start to invest with a guaranteed monthly income, and create a growth plan with consistent deposits, as if you were a bank. In the forex market, 90% of traders lose 90% of their capital in 90 days. The key is to survive and finding a winning system using low risk. By surviving 90 days you will put yourself in the top 10% of the traders, the next step is to work on being profitable. In this market, traders lose money faster than in other financial markets, this is due to the incorrect use of leverage, over trading, and by using a losing trading system. You must learn to invest logically and prudently. If you think that trading is just a bet with the market, you will never get concrete results in the long term. Once you have identified the strategy, or strategies, that are best adopted at the various moments of the market, the next step is to follow the rules with discipline and logic. A positive feedback cycle is a self-perpetuating pattern of behavior, in which the end result reinforces the initial act. When trades are open constantly following the identified strategy, and generate profits with an adequate risk-reward, the results will lead to positive feedback cycles. Success attracts greater success, and this will generate greater confidence when trading. Stick to your plan, and focus on following your trading strategy at all times. We must not be afraid of small losses, but we must constantly learn from them, in order to improve and understand which market conditions to avoid, focusing exclusively on long-term results. Too much enthusiasm can bring to irrational exuberance, that will lead to negative results. Overconfidence and overestimation of your abilities will bring you to bad decisions, such as risking more capital than usual, and entering trades when the setup is not as it should be. When executing trades, be confident and follow strictly your risk management plan without involving emotions. Always look at trades from different angles, and filter opportunities to leverage the best ones. To continue experiencing positive feedback cycles, you must have a rational trading plan, and you must continuously measure your results over time. 
A negative feedback cycle is a self-perpetuating downward spiral, where some initial bad event is being compounded, and made worse by the behavior of the trader. Panic, fear, overconfidence, and greed, are emotions that drive this negative cycle. The main reason of why a trader enters in a negative feedback cycle, is a lack of emotional management, that brings the trader to focus on money, instead of focusing on learning and improving. The lack of a correct risk management is the main reason of why so many traders fail. These traders are solely focused on the short term, and they don't understand that trading requires patience, and that there is no need to be in a hurry to make profit. Another important factor is not having a rational backtested system. Before entering a positive feedback cycle, you need to first have a positive history of profitable results, that confirm your trading system. You can't expect to be profitable in the long term, if your strategy is weak and does not adapt to the market. Negative feedback cycles will continue to be experienced, if the trader does not adapt to the changing market, and does not put in work to improve its trading system and emotional management.